True prophetic love, a bond that's pure and true. True prophetic love, a love that guides us all in everything we do. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala khatamin nabiyyin. أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Please recite after me الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله The final prophet of Allah صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم has said The person closest to me on the day of judgment will be the one who would have recited salawat upon me abundantly in the world. Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. We live in a time where the world is very fast-paced. Advancements in technology, communication and transport have all provided facilities to aid the human beings for an easier life. Yet at the same time, we observe an increase in depression, anxiety, and suicide rates. Young adults and teenagers are seen wearing lavish clothing and eating from expensive restaurants that are struggling with mental health problems. Why is it that we can connect with the globe, with our phones, yet we are unable to connect with ourselves and feel happy? If we truly desire happiness and peace and contentment, let us ask those who faced so many hardships, but were spiritually and internally content and happy. Let us ask them, what force, what was the thing that kept them firm? Let us ask Sayyiduna Ali al-Murtada radiyallahu ta'ala an, the fourth caliph of Islam, the cousin of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. It is mentioned in Ash-Shifa bi Ta'if al-Hukuk al-Mustafa, that Sayyiduna Ali radiyallahu ta'ala an was asked, how was your love for the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam? Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala an, he said, By Allah, we loved him more than our wealth, our sons, and our mothers, and more than cold water in a time of great thirst. This was the love that they had for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. How much would they need and desire cold water in a time of thirst? When we really need something, the value of it grows in our sight. Yet Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala an, he is saying that we love the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam more than cold water in a time of great thirst. This was the driving force. This was the thing that kept them firm in times of hardship. And this is not just limited to Sayyidina Ali radiallahu an. We see this with many sahaba alayhi muridwan, with many awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that what kept them firm was their love, the true love that they had for the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And inshallah, this is what we will discuss in this program, true prophetic love. What it really means to love the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, how we can embed it into our lives and how we can reach salvation through it, how we can reach success through it. Another incident I would like to mention here that a woman, a Sahabiyah from the Ansar, she, in, her, in the Battle of Uhud, her father, her brother, and husband, they were all killed fighting in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But what does she ask? She says, what has happened to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Her father has died, he's been martyred. Her brother has died, he's been martyred. And her husband has been martyred. Yet she, look at the question she's asking. And the companions alayhim wa they said, he is as well as you would like. Praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She says, show him to me so that I can look at him. When she saw the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, she said, every affliction is as nothing now that you are safe. 
she's talking about the Prophet The prophetic love that she has for the Messenger of Allah is past her father, her husband and her brother. Someone who is deeply engrossed in the love of the Prophet وسلم, no matter how much affliction he is in, whenever the Prophet وسلم, is remembered, all his worries are forgotten. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam and we realize that it is the love of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which keeps one firm through hardships and tribulations. We see this in the lives of the companions alayhi muridwan who faced mountains of tests yet their love and faith in the final Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave them patience until they sacrificed their wealth, their children, and their lives as well for the sake of the beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In this program, my dear viewers of Madni Channel, we intend to go through different manifestations of love of the companions alayhi muridwan for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why? What's the purpose of this? To increase our own love for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. To gain a fraction of that treasure which the Sahaba alayhi muridwan had within their chest, so that we too sacrifice everything for the sake of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills inshallah to walk behind the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam into paradise. Sayyidina Anas radiallahu ta'ala an, he narrates that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that none of you shall truly believe until I am more beloved to him than his parents, his children, and all of mankind. It is also narrated from Sayyidina Anas radiallahu ta'ala an that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stated, whoever has three traits within himself will find the sweetness of faith. Halawatul iman. One who loves Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam more than anything else. One who loves a servant only for the sake of Allah. And one who hates to turn back to disbelief after Allah has saved him just as he hates to be thrown into the fire. Mufti Ahmad Yar Khan Naimi rahimahullah ta'ala he mentions in Mir'at the sharah of Mishkat al-Musabih that like there are different pleasures in bodily food, there are different pleasures of spiritual food, faith and actions. And like only the one whose apparent senses are sound can feel the pleasures of these bodily foods, similarly the pleasures from the food of faith, iman, can only be felt by the one whose soul, ruh, is sound. Just as in order to correct the apparent senses, there are different cures. Likewise, in order to correct these senses, there are spiritual cures. In this hadith, these cures are mentioned. The Prophet ﷺ is the categorical physical and spiritual doctor. The one who attains the sweetness of faith happily perseveres through huge calamities. He fulfills prayers in the winter and fights in the way of Allah with patience. The plain of Karbala is a live and living commentary of this hadith. Only this pleasure makes every difficulty easy and being pleased with the divine will is attained through this. Being pleased with the divine will is attained through this, meaning the love of the Prophet and its pleasures. Exploring this topic of love further, Another author by the name of Qadi Iyad Maliki, rahimahullah ta'ala, the author of Ashifa, he states in his book that reality of love is the inclination towards that which a human finds agreeable. He's, in a, he's muwafiq to it. He further states three reasons why a person may incline towards something, why he may love something. Number one, due to its outer apparent beauty and appearance. Number two, due to its inner qualities and character. And number three, due to its favors upon him. These are three reasons why someone may love something. And he mentioned that if we observe these three features within the Prophet ﷺ, we find him 
Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to be perfect upon all three features. His outer beauty and appearance is like none other. None can match his inner qualities and his favors are so great upon us that we cannot put it into number. Subhanallah. He is matchless, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in all three categories. This is the beauty and this is the uniqueness of the Prophet that when we talk about his outer beauty, none can match his outer beauty. When we talk about his inner qualities and his mannerisms and his etiquettes and his behaviors, he's so perfect that none other can match him. And when we talk about his favors, subhanAllah, Allahu Akbar, what can we say about the favors of the Prophet We are literally left speechless. SubhanAllah. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is perfect in all of these factors and none from the creation can surpass him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Inshallah, we will discover each of these three aspects in coming episodes, inshallah. He sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam is the closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And thus, if we want to attain the proximity to Allah, then we must gain the closeness of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. This is why Allah Hazrat Imam Ahmad Rida Khan, rahimahullah ta'ala, the Imam of Ahl Sunnah, he says, Ba khuda khuda ka yehi hadar, nahi aur koi mafar makar. Jo wahaan se ho, yehi aake ho, jo yahaan nahi, wo wahaan nahi. Indeed, that the court of Allah is this court of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And no one can reach closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without the wasila, without the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And how do we gain the closeness of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? And that is by observing the love and practices of the Sahaba alayhi wa such that Allah and His Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam became dearer to them than their wealth, children, families and themselves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran, translation from Kanzul Iman, Say you, O beloved sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, if your fathers and your sons and your brothers and your wives and your family and your acquired wealth and the trade in which you fear loss and the houses of your liking all these things are dearer to you than Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam and fighting in His path, then wait until Allah sends His command, i.e. punishment, and Allah does not guide the transgressors. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. This is the Qur'an, Surah Tawbah, that we must love the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam more than our fathers, our Sons, our brothers, wives, family, wealth, trade in which we fear loss, and houses of our liking. Subhanallah. May Allah give us the true love of the Prophet. It is mentioned in the tafsir of this, the exegesis of this ayah in Siratul Jinan. One hadith is mentioned from Sayyidina Anas bin Malik radiallahu ta'ala an. A man asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, when will the hour be established, O Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said, what have you prepared for it? The man said, I haven't prepared for it much of prayers or fast or alms, charity, but I love Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said, you will be with those whom you love. SubhanAllah. You will be with those whom you love. My dear Islamic brothers and sisters and viewers of Madhi channel, who do we love? Who, who do we truly love? And we will be with those whom we love. So who should we love? We realize that we should love Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam more than anything else. More than anything else, we should love Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. For we will be with the one who we love. So if we love the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, 
we will be with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now a question may arise, what are the signs of love for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Do I really love the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? And if I do, what are the signs? What are some of the symbols that we can recognize the love of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from? It is mentioned in Siratul Jinan from Ashifa bi Ta'rif al Hukuk al Mustafa. That there are some signs of the love of the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned by the ulama and the scholars. And I will inshallah mention eight. Number one, following the Prophet Sallallahu in words and actions. Meaning doing whatever the Prophet Sallallahu commanded to do and not doing that which he Sallallahu forbade. And acting upon his sunnah. Acting upon the way of the Prophet Sallallahu as we go through these signs of love, my dear viewers of Monday Channel, let us question ourselves. Let us go through every single sign and ask ourselves, is this present in me? Is this present in me? Is this present in me? Number two, prioritizing those actions which the Prophet ﷺ encouraged more than one's own personal and carnal desires. More than your own desires. We must prioritize those actions which the Prophet ﷺ encouraged. Number three, mentioning his beautiful mention in abundance. Sending salawat upon him ﷺ and reading his pure life, his pure seerah. How much do we remember our beloved ﷺ? How much do we send salawat upon the Prophet ﷺ? And how much do we read about his pure life? Amir al Sunnah, Damat Barakat Mul Aliya Mulana Ilyas Tar Qadri, our Shaykh, our Murshid, he has given us a list of Naik Amal, good pious deeds. And you can download this on the App Store and the Play Store, and you can get it in a booklet form as well. And there is a pious deed in there which we need to check every day. We need to check if we have done it today. And that is, have you recited salawat upon the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa at least 313 times today? So these awliya of Allah, they are making us go closer to the love of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa So this is one sign that someone loves the Prophet sallallahu alaihi that sending salawat upon the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa Number four, honoring and showing respect. When the beloved sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa is mentioned and showing humbleness upon hearing his sallallahu alayhi wa blessed name. Allahu Akbar. Number five, loving the one who the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa loves. Number six, having enmity towards whatever Allah and his beloved sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa have enmity towards. And avoiding that whatever Allah and His Messenger وسلم, dislike and despise, we must avoid that. That is one sign of loving the Prophet Number seven, loving the Holy Quran. Allah. The Quran, the Kalam of Allah, the Book of Allah, which was revealed upon the heart of the Prophet How much do we love the Quran? How much do we read the Quran? How much do we try to understand the Qur'an? Alhamdulillah, the platform of Dawat Islami has given us so many opportunities to learn the Qur'an. Alhamdulillah, Fazan Online Academy, you can sign up on that, you can receive classes to learn the Holy Qur'an. And so we must love the Qur'an with our affection, by kissing it, putting it in a place of respect. Yet also reciting the Quran abundantly, doing tilawa of the Quran, and then understanding its meaning, and then reading its, trying to read its tafsir, what does it mean and how can I act upon it? If you are Urdu speaker right now, you have available Siratul Jinan, the commentary of the Holy Quran by Mufti Qasim al Tari, Hafizahullah ta'ala. Number eight. Showing affection and favor 
with the nation ummah of the honorable messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam showing love and favor and affection to the ummah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam taking care of the needs of the ummah of the prophet sallallahu there is great virtue in this there is great virtue in this and so these are some of the signs that a person loves the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And once we gain the love of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, inshallah we hope from the mercy of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala that He brings us with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Jannah. Allah Hazrat Imam Muhammad Raza Khan Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Alaihi says, Jaan hai ishq Mustafa, roz fuzun kare khuda, jisko ho dard ka maza, naze dawa uthai kyun. May Allah give us the true love of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And may Allah give us that love which makes us practice the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad. True prophetic love, a bond that's pure and true. True prophetic love, a love that guides us all.